So uh, today's speaker, Jack Shaw, is Regenesis District Manager for the UK and Scandinavia. Uh, he has over 10 years experience, ranging from supervising site investigations, developing in situ remedial designs and managing all kinds of projects from small to very large ones with multiple stakeholders. Um, so he tends to see a, a number of site types and um, has dealt with a wide range of contaminants and concentration levels. So I think he's well placed to give today's presentation. Um, Jack, I'm going to hand over to you. Hi everyone. Yep. So today's webinar will be um, centred on a technology we have called Petrofix and how it can be used to treat high levels of petroleum hydrocarbons um, in situ. Uh, for many, as many of you know, we in Regenesis, what we do is we specialise in the research, development, and commercialisation of injectable substrates to remediate contaminated groundwater. So the focus of today's talk will be on Petrofix. It's a relatively new technology. Um, that we released in 2018, but uh, really it's only been in Europe since January uh, 2019, so we're getting on now for 12 months of use over here. Um, but as you can see, um, we have a wide range of different technologies that can not only treat um, petroleum hydrocarbons, but also chlorinated solvents and other more emerging contaminants as well. Um, so as part of this webinar, what we're going to do is explain the remediation process behind Petrofix, that being rapid absorption of petroleum hydrocarbons, and then enhancing the anaerobic bioremediation process. The second, uh, we will work through a series of practical application scenarios. So we'll look at direct push injection, um, application through wells and um, excavations, as well as some preventative approaches where this technology has been used. And then finally, we will touch on some uh, case studies from the UK and Europe, but we will go into more detail on two US case studies where they really went above and beyond monitoring, validation and verification, not only of um, absorption and removal of petroleum hydrocarbons from the aqueous phase, but also proving that we were enhancing the uh, anaerobic bioremediation of residual um, BTEX and, and TPH. Before I go into the technology in too much detail though, um, I always like to start with this slide because when you're evaluating different in situ remediation processes and particularly injectable um, substrates, I always think it's good to come back to sort of the four cornerstones of in situ remediation technologies. Namely, what you're proposing needs to be easy to use, but it also needs to be appropriately reactive um, because we are injecting something into the subsurface, you need it to distribute well, and you also need something that is going to be persistent. Um, you know, if you're applying something to the subsurface and it's incredibly reactive, but it burns out very quickly, then you're likely not going to yield um, a highly efficient uh, treatment strategy. Um, so really it's about balancing all of these four things. And when it comes to distribution and, and persistence, we in Regenesis have now released a series of colloidal activated uh, technologies, um, Plume Stop being the first, um, more recently S Micron ZVI and now Petrofix. And really um, this ease of use and distribution in the subsurface using colloidal reagents is, um, is very powerful. So Petrofix as a technology, um, what it is, it's a dual function activated carbon amendment. Um, it consists of um, micron scale activated carbon. So what we've done is we've milled granular activated carbon down to one to two microns. So that's the size of a bacterium, it's the size of a pore throat. Um, and we have interpolated a slow release electron acceptor, sulfate electron acceptor into that mix. Um, Petrofix is a two-part product, so some of you may be familiar with Regenox, where you have part A and B here in Petrofix. We have the Petrofix concentrate, and then we have a second part, which is an electron acceptor mix comprising nitrates and sulfates. This then provides a combination of both rapid absorption of mobile contamination, contamination that is in the aqueous phase, and it facilitates the onset of natural degradation. So we're kick-starting, in this case, the um, anaerobic um, degradation of TPH in situ. We've designed Petrofix specifically with petroleum hydrocarbons in mind. Um, so both gasoline and diesel range um, petroleum hydrocarbons, BTEX, MTBE um, and other PAHs such as naphthalene. In terms of what it is, so it's, it's milled 
carbon down to one to two microns and it's shipped in 181 kilogram drums or for spill response sites or smaller sites where perhaps getting a, a large drum like that on into somebody's back garden or, or where you there's limited access we do ship it in 181 kilogram tubs as well we have a second part so this is this electron acceptor um, this comes in 10 kilogram buckets so again fairly easy to use and to handle um, but this nitrate this EA blend, um, this electron acceptor blend, comes in two forms, one comprising ammonium sulfate and sodium nitrate, or, and it's up to you depending on where your site is, a ammonium sulfate and potassium sulfate blend. We prefer you to use the nitrate blend because the microbes that utilize nitrates as electron acceptors are normally very good at degrading benzene in situ, and it's often benzene that is driving the risk when it comes to um, petroleum hydrocarbon contamination. However, if you are in a nitrate protection zone and perhaps um, the addition of nitrates to the groundwater um, isn't possible, then you can fall back on this um, alternative option which has a potassium sulfate instead of sodium nitrate. In terms of the remediation process, um, Petrofix works by uh, you inject it into the subsurface and it rapidly absorbs petroleum hydrocarbons in situ. And then this additional electron acceptor blend um, provides a source of nitrates and sulfates to kickstart the anaerobic biological degradation process. Um, now, it may be that uh, you have a site where you have quantitative remediation targets. So instead of going for a betterment approach, which we often see in the UK, you may have quantitative targets that you need to hit and you may need to hit them quickly. Um, in which case we can use Petrofix as a platform technology and pair it with uh, another product of Regenesis called ORC, an oxygen releasing compound, um, to degrade petroleum hydrocarbons quicker. However, if you want to go down the anaerobic route, we have this nitrate and sulfate blend. And under these anaerobic conditions, we can create um, conditions by which different groups of microbes feed together to keep conditions within the aquifer um, thermodynamically favorable so you get full degradation of BTEX and TPH. Um, this is what syn uh, syntrophy describes. So syntrophy is a, is a description of different groups of microbes feeding together. What happens is that you get microbes utilizing um, nitrates and, and sulfates that will do degrade uh, petroleum hydrocarbons in situ. But as these hydrocarbons are degraded, um, a series of waste products begin to form. So dissolved face hydrogen and acetate and other organic acids. And as these waste products build up, conditions in the aquifer become less and less thermodynamically favorable for the degradation of, of BTEX and TPH. But under anaerobic conditions, a different group of microbes, the methanogens, can utilize these waste products and then fully mineralize them through to carbon dioxide, water, and methane. And often it's this syntrophic process that can continue long after those electron acceptors have been used up. With regards to the bioremediation challenges that Petrofix can overcome, um, firstly, it would be uh, higher concentrations. So the initial challenge is that where you have excessive uh, petroleum hydrocarbons in the aqueous phase, at very high concentrations, those petroleum that, that, that level of petroleum hydrocarbons can actually become toxic to the microbes that want to metabolize them. So a solution to this is sorption. So when you inject Petrofix into the subsurface, you'll have rapid sorption of the petroleum hydrocarbons, but they're still bioavailable. So they're still able to be accessed by the microbes to metabolize them in situ. The second then is lack of terminal electron acceptors. So whenever um, petroleum hydrocarbons are released into the environment and uh, into the groundwater. Various electron acceptors are used up very quickly. So oxygen being the first one, oxygen as an electron acceptor will provide the most energy um, to a microbe. So often that is um, used up, followed by uh, manganese, iron, sulfate, nitrate. And then finally, um, you end up with uh, deeply anaerobic conditions in, in methanogenesis. So by the addition of nitrates and sulfates into the subsurface, um, you can kickstart that anaerobic bioremediation process. And as I said before, we utilize nitrates in particular um, because the microbes that utilize them are very good at, at degrading benzene. 
Thirdly, this build-up of intermediaries, um, as I said before, syntrophy takes care of that. So you have these two different groups of microbes working together, um, ensuring that conditions within the aquifer remain um, thermodynamically favorable for uh, BTEX and, and TPH degradation. Um, and what we've seen is often this condition, these conditions carry on long after the uh, different electron acceptors have been used up. In terms of the modes of action, so uh, when you inject Petrofix, sort of the immediate reduction in contaminant levels you will see are down to sorption. So you can see here in the picture at the top, this is a uh, before shot, if you like. So these are your, these are sand grains. This bar here is about 50 microns across. Um, so the sand grains, very flat, not a lot of absorption sites. After the Petrofix has been applied, it's coated the outside of these sand grains, greatly increasing its surface area, greatly increasing its absorption capacity. Now, with the addition of electron acceptors, um, such as nitrates and sulfates, or as I said, if you want to use this as a platform technology with ORC, you can stimulate um, anaerobic conditions, so you can encourage the growth of uh, microbes. And as those microbes degrade and metabolize that contamination, more sorption sites within the carbon get freed up. And so you can engineer what is essentially a self-cleaning um, carbon filter, a self-cleaning Brita filter in the subsurface using Petrofix. In terms of its practical application, um, Petrofix comes as a concentrate. You mix it typically five to one with water, though different sites and different concentrations will of, of contaminants will affect that dilution. You then add the nitrate and sulfate mix, and it enables you then to pump and pour it into excavations, um, apply via direct push or via injection wells. But the key thing is that we want you to apply this under lower pressure, so typically below two bar. What we don't want is this product being applied into the subsurface and you end up fracking it into the, the subsurface. And we'll go into that in a bit more detail in a second. Crucially, it's very safe to use. Um, here in the UK, where we've seen it um, taken up the most is within the spill response industry. Typically, it's being um, applied in people's back gardens um, to prevent off-site migration of uh, kerosene plumes. Um, it's a non-hazardous product, so beyond your, the standard PPE you would normally um, have on site, that's, that's what you would require. Um, easy. So the particle size of Petrofix is really important and then how well that then distributes into the subsurface, it then has an effect on how well it then distributes into the subsurface. So granular activated carbon typically exists between uh, 400 and 1000 microns across. If you had to inject that into the subsurface, you would need to do it under um, pretty high pressure, resulting frac it's like essentially fracturing of the aquifer, fracking these, these products into the subsurface. Um, powdered activated carbon, so something that's say 50 to 250 microns across, typically has um, the consistency of flour that you would then mix with water, um, again, would still need um, high pressure injection because often these particle sizes are bigger than the pore throats you're trying to get them to travel down. Um, some work has been done on this. So this was a uh, presentation that was given by the state of Colorado. Um, there's a, a link to this presentation um, in, in this webinar um, that investigated is this what we're seeing when you're injecting powdered activated carbon into the subsurface and um, what they found is that it was being emplaced in treatment veins rather than um, fully painting the subsurface of the aquifer that um, it was being fracting and that the, the treatment wasn't complete. So unlike powdered activated carbon, um, Petrofix is a, is a liquid activated carbon um, and you add it uh, to water to create a colloidal um, suspension. So this ensures that it can be distributed equally across the aquifer, particularly under low pressure. That two microns is important. It means that you can use it um, within medium to fine uh, sands or even um, 
uh, silt environment but the key thing is you do want to be injecting it under under low pressure so you get even distribution of this uh, product in the subsurface um, Often, though, where we're seeing Petrofix being used, there, ha the t there hasn't been the time to adequately um, identify where the flux zones within the aquifer are. So what I often say to people when they are actively applying it on site is just to keep an eye on the injection pressure. As you um, inject this product through the subsurface, you may see that um, in certain horizons, the injection pressure starts to drop. Um, that would indicate to me that you have um, found a high permeability zone and therefore you should try and concentrate uh, the majority of your injection efforts within these higher flux zones because they're going to be responsible for about 95 percent of your contaminant transport across your site. Um, the good thing with Petrofix is that it's very easy to trace um, where it has gone. It will stain the subsurface black. Um, I'll go into this in a bit more detail, um, reviewing the case studies from the US. Um, so we would typically recommend that you should inject it at one to one and a half meter centers. Um, but if you do have time to take some window, sa window samples and you can see that you're getting a much better radius of influence, um, do feel free to give us a call and maybe we can um, react to that and alter the design accordingly. Um, we also have tests that you can do to um, analyze what kind of uh, Petrofix dose you're getting from a radi uh, from the injection point. Again, that's something that we can we can help you guys out with. You may be thinking that Petrofix sounds quite similar to another product that we have, and it was certainly an evolution of um, Plume Stop. Um, both Plume Stop and Petrofix do have um, the milled granular activated carbon down to one to two microns. Uh, the key thing with Petrofix, though, is that we ship it at a much higher concentrate. Um, so it comes at a 30% concentrate, whereas Plume Stop comes at less than 4%. Um, however, Petrofix has been specifically formulated for petroleum hydrocarbons, and unlike Plume Stop, uh, anybody can apply it. So if you're a remediation contractor um, and you want uh, to buy this off the shelf and apply it yourself, we're, we're happy for you to do that. Whereas Plume Stop um, comes as an applied service. In terms of site performance, so the first site that I'd like to talk you through is a former gasoline um, service station um, where they had about a thousand liters of gasoline released in 2007. Um, various phases of remediation was completed across the site, including targeted excavation, um, pump and treat, uh, enhanced bioremediation, and, and a hydrogen peroxide injection. Um, but they had limited success. Um, this was one of the first sites where Petrofix was used. This was actually done during the, um, the formulation and testing of the product. Uh, here we it was decided that Petrofix should be injected across a treatment area where the highest concentrations in this case of um, xylene were recorded uh, off-site down gradient of the former source area. Um, this just gives you an overview of the site. I mean, I've been doing this for 11 years. I don't think I've ever had the chance to work beachfront somewhere, so I can see why plenty of photographs were taken. Um, and these were the baseline concentrations. So various monitoring rounds were completed. This is from uh, MW8 uh, since 2013. Um, you can see here probably 2015, they were thinking that they were seeing um, the last of this contamination. Um, up here, up here uh, are the remediation target values. So this site was um, in Florida and uh, yeah, they would. They, you would probably expect to think, okay, we're getting close to closing out this particular site. However, concentrations soon started to rise, and we had concentrations well above the remediation target levels. Um, Petrofix was injected um, uh, within this area. Uh, here, we chose this site um, as a beta site, particularly with specifics to the geology. Um, we were dealing with a beach sand. Um, this is a uh, two before shots, and then afterwards you can see that Petrofix has successfully stained the subsurface black. That would suggest that we have got the distribution that was required. Um, that's just a, a closer shot. Um, 
So the pilot test, we injected 100, 780 kilos of Petrofix with the nitrate and sulfate blend across 10 direct push injection points, um, targeting a zone of one and a half to five meters below ground level. Um, here we also did um, distribution verification tests, so we undertook a series of window sample exercises across the site and we confirmed that the um, optimal spacing for this particular site was um, between one and a half and seven and 1.7 meters. Uh, with regards to the initial results, so the injections were completed in March and these have been the results um, since. Um, Concentrations of uh, TPH as well as BTEX have dropped down to below detection limits and have stayed below detection um, ever since post-injection. So essentially what they were able to do in this area was um, install a, a permeable reactive barrier to stop the off-site migration of contamination from the former source area and the residual contamination that was beneath the, the public road. So the full-scale treatment plan will be comprising of uh, Petrofix injections across um, this residual source area. Um, this hasn't gone ahead yet, um, but based on the success from the initial trial, that's what is being um, proposed. The second site um, is also a beta test site that was um, performed in the US. Um, again, I, we, I use these two examples because this is the longest data sets we have in terms of the technology being applied. Um, this site was a, a historical bulk petroleum storage facility. Um, again, had multiple remediation activities completed um, within this site since 2006. So they had a series of soil vapor extraction um, phases completed as well as uh, LNAPL recovery since 2006. However, on the site um, there were still areas where concentrations were exceeding the remedial, uh, remedial target levels um, and there were rec recalcitrant areas within the site where remediation had already taken place. Um, so here what was decided was to initially inject Petrofix um, within a fairly small treatment area around one target well as a trial and then based on that trial would go to inform the full-scale application design. Um, so these were the initial results. So uh, this is um, gasoline and then diesel range, petroleum hydrocarbons. Um, I would say this is sort of the upper limit of where you would want to use Petrofix. Um, you know, you would expect on this site to be seeing uh, free phase contamination. If you do have free phase contamination on your site, then this wouldn't be the first technology to reach for. You might want to consider uh, pump and treat or enhancing that pump and treat system with um, something like PetraCleanse um, before applying Petrofix. Uh, but here um, you had concentrations that were indicative of free phase, but no free phase was being reported. Um, Post-injection, you can see that those levels um, drop down to below detection limit for the gasoline range. Uh, the diesel range um, continued uh, to drop, but in February 2019, um, we saw some rebound both, both in the gasoline and diesel range, um, uh, petroleum TPH. Uh, however, in April of that year, they completed the full-scale injection works across the remaining area. So essentially what we had done up to February 2019 was punch a small hole in a much larger plume. Um, so we were expecting to see some rebound, but by May 2019, the full scale works um, had been uh, completed and contamination levels began to drop again. So similar story for BTEX. Um, so here in the UK, often it is benzene that's driving the risk when it comes to uh, groundwater contamination by TPH. Um, again, you can see levels drop down to non-detect. You have some uh, noise in, in August and November. Um, by February, uh, we start to see some rebound, and then then May, post full scale injection, um, you uh, begin to see the BTEX dropping off again. Now, what was is particularly um, special about this site is that they really went above and beyond when it came to monitoring tertiary um, and secondary lines of evidence for bioremediation. 
Um, so the first thing that they looked at was um, the presence and then utilization of nitrate and sulfate in the subsurface. So here you can see post-injection um, levels of nitrate and sulfate increase um, significantly. Those levels then um, begin to drop as, those, as that sulfate and nitrate is used. Um, crucially though, you have sustained methane, dissolved phase methane levels in the groundwater long after the um, sulfates and nitrates have been used up, which would indicate to us that we have created syntrophic conditions in the aquifer. So conditions are going to stay um, thermodynamically um, favorable for the degradation of TPH in situ. You can see that there is then an increase in, um, in sulfate levels, uh, and that's post full-scale injection. Um, that again would indicate that we've got good distribution of these um, electron acceptors. There's a lot more information on syntrophy um, on our on our website so we've written a couple of white papers on on this subject. Um, similarly if you would like a copy of the paper that was referred to earlier on in the presentation um, just let us know and I'm sure we can provide that. The tertiary line of evidence then was also looking at microbial consortia in situ. Um, so initially there was some sampling of um, the total cell count of microbes in the subsurface um, pre-injection. Post-injection um, we then uh, took uh, samples once the uh, yeah so once the um, once the uh, Petrofix was applied and uh, you can see that the uh, total cell cell count um, is starting to climb but what is crucial is that we're also seeing an increase in uh, diversity as well particularly of PM1 which is essential to the breakdown of petroleum hydrocarbons in situ so again a tertiary line of evidence that you know we have created an environment in the subsurface um, conducive to bioremediation and that we're seeing a proliferation of microflora in the subsurface. In terms of where and how we're seeing this product being used, um, so, uh, one, so the second most common way of using it would be as a grid application. So here this is um, a source area approach um, where you would apply Petrofix across a source area um, where you don't have any uh, measurable free phase um, to yield significant betterment of the subsurface. Where I'm seeing it used quite a lot both in the UK and Scandinavia is as a passive plume management tool, so installation of a cutoff barrier to mitigate against off-site migration of contamination. Um, something that I wasn't an anticipating it being used for is to hold back contamination, um, really to be used as a sticking plaster, to halt the off-site migration of contamination to then buy consultants more time to or uh, remediation contractors to do more time to do better site investigation within the source area um, to halt the spreading of that plume so um, ensure that the liability isn't increased by taking more time to understand your site so that you can finally so that when it comes to the full scale remediation it can be much more targeted um, you can deliver a much more targeted approach. We're also seeing it applied into the base of excavation, so co-applying it with something like ORC um, to address any residual dissolved phase contamination. Um, something that we didn't foresee was it to be used as a preventative measure, so the application of Petrofix um, into the base of an excavation where a, an underground storage tank is due to be installed. Um, so that if there is any you know, residual dissolve phase or any um, slow leak of hydrocarbons, it can be captured by the Petrofix and again mitigate against off-site migration. Um, in the UK, it's very much been used by the spill response industry. Um, here is an example, one of the first uses of uh, Petrofix um, to protect a nearby chalk stream. Um, it was installed by Seed, installed by Seed Environmental. Um, here also, we they were trying to stop the continual off-site migration of dissolved phase TPH. So 
they would only have to deal with one uh, loss adjuster to try and keep the job as straightforward as possible. Um, we're also seeing it applied down um, drainage runs where perhaps uh, following, again, a release of fuel, um, there's some residual um, dissolved phase contamination within these drainage runs and just a way of halting that off-site migration. Uh, Vado sone treatment. Um, so we have a very large project currently underway in uh, Sweden with Envitech, where Petrofix is to be injected within the Vado zone to mitigate against the percolation of uh, shallower contamination um, through the subsurface and then into the underlying groundwater. Uh, or as a preventative measure, so this is an example from uh, where we worked with Kundal, who uh, installed a Petrofix barrier actually on the upgrading edge of a site. Um, the reasons for this was to prevent um, continuing on-site migration of uh, contamination, but also it enabled them to undertake the uh, foundation construction. So here they were going to install a series of pile foundations. Um, initially, they were thinking of installing a bentonite um, slurry wall on the upgrading edge of the site. However, due to how the foundations were going to be laid out, um, this wouldn't have been possible. Um, whereas with Petrofix, they were able to pile through that Petrofix barrier um, and uh, neither affected the foundations or the um, treatment method. So, to wrap up really, Petrofix as a technology um, is very effective at addressing uh, petroleum hydrocarbon contamination in situ. Um, it can be used as a, as a platform technology, so if you would rather go down the aerobic route, if you need to yield much faster reduction in contaminant levels, um, then we can pair it with something like ORC. Um, however, if you are just looking for a betterment approach, um, then we again utilizing it with the electron acceptors nitrate and sulfate um, we've shown that this works and that you can get continual degradation of uh, petroleum hydrocarbons in situ um, and it can be a, a lasting treatment where um, with no little maintenance i mean this is essentially a, a passive approach that once it's in the ground it's a single application and then should continue to work in terms of case studies, so if you are looking for further case studies and examples of the use of Petrofix and, and other remediation technologies by Regenesis, and we have over 200 of them online, um, and uh, yeah, they're fairly easy to search. So if you have a site and you're interested to see if the, one of these technologies would apply, then I'd sort of encourage you to visit our website or um, contact me directly. Um, if you've got, yeah, any any questions, Amanda? I don't know, we've got a bit of time. Uh, thank you, Jack, that was great. Uh, yeah, quite a few questions have come in. Um, um, and we have less than our normal time, really, because they have to use the, the room uh, at a quarter to. So we'll see how we go. But um, right, let me start. Um, yeah, let me start with this one. Um, would Petrofix be suitable for use in clays or other lower permeability formations? So um, typically, typically the cutoff would be something like 10 to the minus 6, something like that. Um, but what I would say is if you're dealing with a site where you have, where, where, where you think you have a clay, but you have a very large plume, then chances are that clay isn't as impermeable as you may think. Um, so when it comes to low lower K formations, what I always say is if you can do more site investigation to better identify those flux zones, and then what we can do then is um, target them using Petrofix. Um, so this could, like I say, could ideally it could be done during um, the, a supplementary site investigation um, or to a degree could be done while you're doing the injecting so looking for that drop in injection pressure um, but yeah if you are dealing with a true clay and you don't really have a plume and it's confined to a very small area then there are other technologies that we could reach for such as such as ORC that would rely on diffusion of oxygen rather than advective distribution of the product. Okay, thank you. Um, 
I think you've already covered this really, but um, someone's asking, can, can Petrofix be applied close to USTs? Um, yep, yeah, so you can apply it yeah, close to underground storage tanks. You can apply it into um, gravel, you know, gravel packing around other underground utilities. Um, you don't, you don't have problems injecting it around live services or near foundations, which you may see with, um, say, other injectable reagents that might be sulfate based, for example. Okay. Um, right. The next question: um, What evidence is there? that PAHs will degrade under anaerobic conditions? Okay, so um, anaerobic degradation of petroleum hydrocarbons is, um, is well understood, but it's slower than under aerobic conditions and it's similar to PAHs really. So PAHs, naphthalene and, and fluoranthine will also degrade under anaerobic conditions. Um, there are at least three um, there are at least three microbial functional genes that can be analyzed for that, that play a role in the anaerobic degradation of of PAHs, uh, such as MNSSA uh, uh, and naphthalene carboxylase. Um, and we have seen these genes present in microbes on sites that have been treated with petrofix in the past. So if you're dealing with um, if you're dealing with a gas works, for example, and uh, naphthalene is often the, the issue um, when it comes to dissolved phase contamination, as well as the uh, the, the B-tex bloom that may come off creosotes, uh, this would be a, a suitable technology to use in, air, in, in those sort of recalcitrant areas. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I'm still scribbling questions down. Um, the next one is, uh, uh, when would you use plume, uh, when would you use Petrofix over plume stop? So Petrofix, where you we'll start again. So where you would use plume stop would be for sites where, that, that are impacted with chlorinated solvents. We wouldn't recommend Petrofix for, for sites that are impacted with chlorinated solvents um, because of the sulfates that are built into Petrofix. So it's not uh, conducive to, uh, reductive to chlorination. Um, plume stop is also very much been developed to address plumes. Um, so you would be looking at much lower dissolved phase concentrations, um, you know, 500 uh, micrograms and um, below when it comes to petroleum hydrocarbons in situ, really. Whereas Petrofix can handle much higher levels of, of contamination as we sort of went through in the different case studies. Um, so yeah, that, that's typically what we would recommend. If you've got a much larger uh, sort of distill end of the plume, then maybe you would reach for, for plume stop, but um, particularly with petroleum hydrocarbons, we'd, we'd recommend Petrofix. Okay, great. Um, right, so the next one is, what about indoor air quality? Um, is there a risk of more volatile and toxic compounds to be formed that can pose a risk for indoor air? Um, there's no reason to suspect that daughter products would be formed through anaerobic degradation of um, TPH or PAHs, uh, so oxy-PAHs, for example. Um, with or without Petrofix, those uh, the the pathway, the reaction pathway, the mechanisms that drive the degradation will be similar. Um, so there aren't going to be any new intermediaries or ones that are sort of unique to applying Petrofix that will be formed, and those intermediaries will largely be absorbed back onto the activated carbon and and biodegraded. Um, so again, will not should not be mobile in the in the subsurface. Right, uh, next one. Um, can it be used close to sensitive receptors, uh, e.g. surface waters? So this is where um, I didn't go into it in, as part of the webinar, but so, something that we spend most of our time doing in Regenesis is actually talking to people to make sure that the technology that they're thinking for the site is right for their site. So if you 
had a site where your source area or where you're looking to apply Petrofix was right next to a sensitive receptor and this is something that we need to know about so we can design for it accordingly. Um, we do have a parking agent that can stop the off-site migration of, of Petrofix, um, but really what we would prefer to do is to design you something with an appropriate uh, radius of influence um, so that you shouldn't see Petrofix arriving um, in the down gradient on, on, the down, on either the down gradient edge close to a, a sensitive water surface water receptor. Um, so yeah, it, it can be used, um, but it, it needs to be managed so you don't see it entering the surface water receptor. Okay, thank you. Um, the next question is sort of combining two and one. Um, it's about where it's been used. So Petrofix, has it been used in Finland? And the other question was how many sites um, have Petrofix been used on internationally to date? Um, so yes, Petrofix has been used in Finland. Um, well, it, it's been shipped to Finland. I'm actually waiting for uh, the contractor who was proposing to use it as part of a trial um, to let me know how that, that trial went. Um, but I've, I've not heard anything, but it's certainly been shipped to Finland. I think it's been applied, um, but I, yeah, I can't can't confirm that it has for sure. Um, in terms of how many sites we've done internationally, the the last I heard was um, we done about we were doing about two a week internationally. So uh, I work in Scandinavia, so I work on week numbers. So we're on week forty nine, so ninety eight sites. So we've probably done over a hundred sites uh, internationally. Thank you. Um, right. Um, how does Petrofix treat MTBE when MTBE has such a low KOC sorry, value and therefore affinity to sorption uh, for sorption to carbon. We've seen issues with this using uh, GAC filters ex situ. Um, so uh, MTBE is pretty recalcitrant um, under anaerobic conditions. So sort of first of all, if we were looking to treat it, um, we would look to pair it with ORC, unless you were dealing with a particularly, um, unless you were dealing with a particularly aerobic aquifer naturally. I think anaerobic, the anaerobic half-life of MTB is something like four, uh, 24 months. Um, again, the KOC value is about 12 and often it's, well, it's to do with a few things really. Um, it's Petrofix and uh, Plume Stop as well. I've experienced first-hand experience of using Plume Stop to address MTBE. Um, does effectively um, absorb MTBE, MTBE in situ. Um, it's really down to residency time. So we're using the natural flow of the aquifer. That means that the residency time of that contamination is is much higher within our engineered carbon filter, and it's also down to particle size. So if you think if you're using a, a GAC, GAC filter ex situ, um, uh, you, you're dealing with larger particle sizes and they have a much smaller surface area. Whereas with uh, Petrofix, it's milled down to one to two microns, so a much larger surface area um, for the contaminants to absorb to. So that's how we, we get over those two, two issues. Great, thank you. Um... Right, can Petrofix be used ex situ to use the bioremediation process? Uh, we wouldn't recommend it ex, um, ex situ. Um, we would look at it really as an, as an in situ process. Um, it's not something that we have explored yet. Um, if you were looking to enhance ex situ bioremediation, we could look at mixing a chemical oxidant, for example, into a biopile. Um, but no, I don't think Petrofix would be would be suitable ex situ. Okay. Um, so another question, any problems with generating heat throughout the chemical reaction using Petrofix? Is there any risk of explosion? Uh, no, no risk of uh, explosion. Um, what we're doing is uh, kickstarting the anaerobic 
bioremediation process so it's a it's a very slow reaction so yeah not it's not like chemical oxidation of using certain chemical oxidants where you can have a problem with increasing heat this is a very yeah low energy thing we're doing okay um right so another question uh will petrofix change the permeability of the aquifer um so again no we, it's just a two micron coating um we, we're looking to maintain the permeability of the aquifer that's sort of important um so you're not going to see any sort of old prbs if you like where you installed uh, gag chambers um, you're not going to see the aquifer silting up. All we're looking to do is um, apply to micron coating of carbon across the aquifer to maintain its permeability. Okay. Um, I think, yeah, just a question has come in which might be related to what you just said. Um, what about biofouling? -fowl um, so again, it's not something, it's not something that we have seen. Um, uh, so this is often an ex situ problem with pump and treat systems where you have, a, 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 again, a GAC filter, GAC filter. Um, we've not seen it in the field or when testing um, products in the lab. Um, so no, we've not seen this to be, be a problem. Okay, I think we have maybe room for one or two more questions. This is quite, this is quite a long one. Um, the radius of impact for the distribution in the groundwater zone seems relatively small. This means more injection points uh, need to be performed compared to the use of ISCO uh, or ORC advance, for example. Can this make using Petrofix more expensive than these other alternatives? So yeah, the radius of uh, the the radius of distribution of Petrofix is is smaller than our other products. Um, but when you compare it to something, and yeah, I'll be honest with you, when we when the product was first released, I was concerned about this as well. It means oh, that you, you may need a lot of injection points, but you have to sort of balance out the relative project cost when you compare it to something like ISCO or um, enhanced natural attenuation, like, like using ORC. So let's say with ORC, you go in at a three by three grid with um, chemical oxidation. Um, so chemical oxidation, we would typically recommend that you apply it over three injection campaigns. So let's say that you have 100 injection points, but really you have 300 injection points because you're going to have to go in three times. Whereas with Petrofix, we designed this to be a single application, so it's not multiple campaigns. Um, often the, you're applying a much lower volume of reagent over the same period of time of over a shorter period of time so there's often a reduction in program because you're not needing to do the multiple applications it's a single hit and really often the cost balances out so it's fairly you know fairly similar if not sometimes a bit cheaper to, to chemical oxidation um, so in enhanced natural attenuation with ORC, um, it's a bit different. So with ORC, you need to get down to concentrations. We would say typically below 10 milligrams per liter before as a technology, it, it becomes uh, viable. Um, that's not always the case. When I say 10 milligrams per liter TPH, I mean a mixed diesel gasoline plume. You know, every, every site's different. Petrofix, you know, it top tops out at 30 to 50 milligrams per litre so you would be looking at a single hit rather than multiple chemical oxidation campaigns to then allow enhanced natural attenuation to, to follow on over. Um, also these hydrocarbon plumes tend to be fairly small you know it's, it's quite unusual to have a very large diffuse petroleum hydrocarbon plume. So you're often dealing with something that's a smaller problem and actually the increase in injection points often doesn't have that much of an impact. Okay. 